Welcome back to the Leadership Forum, a space where corporate leaders share insightful takes on the human side of ingenuity. I'm Sakib Vali, Explorer. Say hi to the future. The leader with us today is Kena Paranjape, founder of All You Are, an empowerment platform and community for women, host of Be All You Are podcast, founder masterminds, group programs for women in mid-career, corporate workshops and offering one-to-one coaching. Kena started off in retail on the merchandising side with brands like Gap and Joe Fresh. She then founded Breaker, a modern retail agency, and served as an advisory board member on the David Sobey Center for Innovation Retailing Services. This intro part is generally where I frame the guests for our listeners, but when I met Kena, she wanted none of that. So welcome, Kena, and thank you for taking time out from your Don't You Dare Put Me in a Box schedule. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you, Sakib. It's so wonderful to be here. Thank you for having me. Sakina, let's let our listeners hear in your voice how you wish to introduce yourself to them and share with us the all you are origin story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so funny because I think, you know, uh, when we met, I shared sort of what's on my LinkedIn profile and then what's not on my LinkedIn profile. And and that's sort of a a distinction I like to make because I think when we are meeting people, we often think of ourselves as the bullet points on our resume or on our LinkedIn profile, but there's so we're so much more than that, right? We um, have lived through so many experiences, um, our upbringing, our you know our influences, where we lived, how we lived, all of these things that affect who we truly are, and so. My company, All You Are, is about acknowledging that, right? Like acknowledging that we might choose a certain career path, but that doesn't make up who we are. It's just a part of what we do. And so All You Are actually began as a product-based business because, as you mentioned, I have a background in in merchandising and product development and retail. And so I had designed the perfect women's robe. I always felt that this, this one item didn't exist. And so I decided to design it and launched it into the world and actually have sold thousands of this robe. And like, you know, 100 five-star reviews, more than 100 five-star reviews. Um, But there came a point where I started to realize that what had defined my career up until then was no longer where I wanted to really put all my efforts and that the life I had experienced off of LinkedIn was really starting to influence my purpose and meaning and what I wanted to create for this second part of my career. And that's when All You Are transitioned from being a product-based business to being what it is today, which is, as you said, an empowerment platform and community for women who are in or approaching midlife and who want to now in this next phase, let go of all the shoulds and all the external expectations and step into all they are, um, both in their personal life and in their career. So Kena, but I mean, during this journey, you said there was a point in time where you felt all you are went from product to this platform. Yeah. Clearly, that was an inflection point. So what brought about that inflection point? Yeah, you know, so um, in the introduction, you shared sort of my my uh, career background, but in my personal life, I've also been on quite a journey. Um, and when I was 30 years old, my husband and I were living in California. He was working in the medical device industry and startups. I was working for Gap Inc. We were sort of, you know, in our uh, early 30s and at the top of our career, like, you know, doing really well, about to sort of take off. Um, And then he became very ill and was in the hospital for four months. And we moved back to Canada at that point. And he had this very complicated um, illness that we managed for eight years until he passed away eight years later. And that was clearly an inflection point in in, uh, my personal journey. And I spent the following 10 years leading up till today, this fall, it will have been 10 years since he passed away, really trying to um, understand the meaning of all of that, right? Of going through something like that at that age um, to that depth. And all the while I was building businesses, sold a business, you know, working in merchandising as a leader. And um I think, you know, all the while I had been doing all this healing and self-exploration and training and learning, 
and really diving into a part of myself that I, I may not have accessed if I had not gone through those difficult things. And so I think there just came a point where the pull towards serving others from what I've learned became more than, you know, just relying on my past experience. So it was almost like at that inflection point, I didn't feel like I had a choice. I felt very much called to do this work at that point. And I think that just meant that I was ready. Thank you for sharing that with us and, and our listeners. I think if I were to think about, yeah, sure, talk about an inflection point, it can be about all about ropes. Um, it's got to be a lot more than that. Doesn't mean you didn't have amazing ropes. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that is kind of where it goes next for, for our conversation, which is, um, one of the human conditions, and boy, uh, talk about a human condition here, that we at Say Hi to the Future explore is resilience. Mm -hmm. And your personal story exemplifies that. But speak a bit to the stories of the people whose lives you have touched as you deliver your mission at All You Are. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. I think I, I'm actually very passionate about this because I think for a lot of us, you know, we live in a time where for most of us in this part of the world um, who are probably listening to this podcast, we are very comfortable, right? Like we have, we're not like um, fighting for our basic needs. And so, you know, our tolerance to things being uncomfortable can be very low, right? We like things the way we like them. And sometimes it takes going through, and I would never wish this upon someone, but sometimes it takes going through something very difficult to realize how resilient you are and how strong you are and how resourceful you are. And it's the imagining of what, how you would handle it that is so scary. But when you're in it, you find the depths of those resources. And I believe that all humans have that. And so when I'm working with clients or when I am um, you know, working with women or even in my corporate workshops, my message is always that you are so much stronger than you think, right? And so, and I don't believe that we are meant to resource that strength only when we're going through difficult times. I believe that we are meant to access that in order to create and to innovate and to do new things and to go out of our comfort zones and to take risks. And um, that's the kind of message that I'm trying to share is not so much about like how to get through tough times, but also how to put yourself in situations where you can access that resilience in order to grow. We've always made that connection, but I don't think we've ever articulated it the way you just did, which is in order for us to in order for us to sustain a situation, resilience comes with resourcefulness mm -hmm. and how you resource that strength. It's a, it's, a, it's a fantastic concept. Can you, I mean, elaborate just a little more on, on that specific aspect? Because I don't think I've, I don't think we have quite spoken of it that way, even mm -hmm. though we've been talking about resilience for a very long time. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I think this is like best illustrated for me through my own personal experience and through a story. So when my husband first got ill, I was in my early 30s. We were in the hospital. I was staying with my in-laws because we he actually was on a business trip when he got sick. So we were, weren't home. We had to rent a house and we had no idea when um, things were going to settle down and when we would be able to go home and, you know, what his condition would be. And so there was so many unknowns and I was looking continuously externally for someone to tell me how to handle this, you know, like to elders in my family or extended family. I, I was just asking, well, how do I, why is this happening? How do I handle this? And really none of them had the answer, right? Like they were supportive and wanted to be there for me, but they were just as shocked by the situation. They hadn't necessarily been through something like this before. And I think I just remember walking around the grounds of this hospital in Arizona. It was extremely hot and dry and thinking like to myself, I have to find my way through this. You know, nobody is going to come and, you know, swoop me up. You know, my dad also passed away when I was 20. So he wasn't in my life to support me through it. And I just realized 
it was like this sort of like message I got that you have it in you to find your way through this. Like you can do this. And I think that each of us has that, but sometimes we haven't been put in a position where we've needed to go that deep, right? We're constantly grasping externally. Someone tell me social media, Google, you know, <laughs> your friends, and neighbors, but we have so much knowing within us. And sometimes like for me, again, I was sort of forced to find that way. We we are going to continue this conversation even well beyond this podcast, Kena, because I think here's the other aspect to it, which, which I'm not so sure if you've quite, quite articulated that way, which is Yes, there's the external set of resources, but it it needs to stem from inner strength and inner resource. Yeah, we can keep going on this. I think I think um, I think this this it just might get into a, a way more of a conversation that I had ever anticipated of getting into. But this is fantastic. Um, why don't we Why don't we try and get to uh, some other conversations? But specifically, Kena, since you are all about unsettling others from their status quo. Talk to talk to us about what's next for you. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I have been doing this work for a few years now, and it's funny because I unsettled my own status quo. Like, you know, again, it's it had been done for me by, you know, unseen forces, but now I had chosen to do it for myself. I disrupted my own life. And, you know, there's a roller coaster ride that comes along with that. <laughs> and so um, I've spent the last few years really just dedicated to connecting with women who are approaching midlife. And the reason why this stage of life is so important, I think it's for men and women, is that there comes a point where that drive just to climb the ladder, right? Whether it's a corporate ladder or entrepreneurial ladder, that drives you for a lot of your maybe 20s and 30s. And then as you start to approach your 40s and go into your 40s and beyond, you know, your um your drive becomes less towards external that validation, at least for a lot of people. And it moves more towards meaning and purpose. And why am I here? And what are my gifts? And what is my unique, you know, offering to the world? Um, and so I have been on that journey myself. And so it's interesting because I do think when you're starting something new, you start by looking at what other people are doing and you say, okay, well, that feels good and that doesn't, and you kind of try it on, but then you start to create for yourself. And that's when it gets really exciting because now you're not just looking at the templates other people are putting out, but you are creating your own masterpieces. And that's sort of the phase I'm in. So there's um, you know, a number of programs that I'm working on. I'm actually creating a membership community now under the radar. That's like by invitation only at this point, but in later in the fall, I'm going to bring forward to the public. And I just really want to change the conversation around what it means to get older as women. A lot of women are um, really afraid of and have been affected by ageism, right? And again, this is, happens with men too, but for women even more so, they they really start to feel like they age out. Mm -hmm. But we all know that purpose is what drives longevity, right? Like not just living long, but living well. And so we need to find that next stage of career that brings purpose to our lives. And so that's really what sort of my mission is, my mission and what I'm evangelical about. Cool. Um, and I know you went in there a couple of times, so I am going to pull on that string just a little bit. <laughs> please don't forget the men who are also going through quite, but I'm sure yes. as part of uh, as part of this journey, yes. I'm sure there are lessons that you learn uh, uh, along the journey of women going through midlife crisis that frankly could be very well like, applicable to men just the same. Yeah. And I'm sure there are resources that are available for them as well. Yes, absolutely. I definitely don't mean to mean leave the men out for sure. <laughs> um, but I think for women also, the shift is also can be related to, you know, being a mother and then the kids are starting to grow up. There's just a lot of things. And then biologically what happens in your 40s, um, the perimenopause, menopause stage, there's just a lot of, so there's like a convergence of things that are happening all at once that create this sort of very monumental shift. And I feel like women don't have a lot of support support for that. And so, um, you know, maybe in the next decade, I'm going to add that <laughs> to the roster. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure as we continue to have these conversations, I'm sure there are people out there who are 
uh, because I know, for example, Scott Galloway yes. uh, is very passionate about not leaving young men behind and how they need to develop as role models and whom they're looking at. Yes. Um, so there are there is enough work going on around there as well because you just cannot have lonely young men. Um, and and frankly, yes, midlife is a different conversation. But right now we have we have so many different places where things are going. For example, if you just take a look at the number, the the overall um, um, class coming in into universities, mm -hmm. it's disproportionately women, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank heavens that's happening. Mm -hmm. But in that process, there are unintended consequences for young men who are not quite getting. Uh, yeah. where they need to get to. So we, I'm sure there are conversations that are going to happen in many different ways. Yes. Kena, why don't, we, why don't we talk about ingenuity, especially the human side of ingenuity? Mm -hmm. um, what's your take? Uh, when do you think it has worked well in the business that you've created for yourself? When has it not? What have you learned along the way? Yeah, so I think like, again, when you're starting out, and I think this is, I'm going to speak to my own experience, but I think when you're starting out, you know, success leaves clues. So it's important to like, see what have other people done who are in your world and how have they done it? And at least sort of learn from the framework of what they've done and use that as a foundation, as like a place to begin. Right. And then once you've gained some confidence there, I think that's when you start to tap into your own instinct and into who you are. Um, to to layer in that ingenuity. And so I think for me, that's what I've learned is that if I had started from the beginning, well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, you know, use my own creativity and start. Um, I didn't necessarily have the confidence to begin there. But so I think I like brought in a little bit of my ingenuity and then I I really tapped into you know what people were doing that seemed to be working. And then, and then now I'm letting my ingenuity blossom. But I think ingenuity comes very much from, you know, what we talked about at the beginning is that inner resourcefulness and that like being able to get quiet and tap into your own intuition, because that's where so many of our gifts are. That's where those downloads come from or those ideas of how to like cross pollinate something or how to create something that maybe hasn't been um, seen before. So I think like nurturing your instinct is a very big part of um, being able to bring ingenuity to whatever you're doing. For sure. And, uh, you know, I, I think you're absolutely right. Even in, in the conversations we've had about getting people to un get unsettled with the status quo or deal with, uh, you know, it, it's good to be uncomfortable and get out of your comfort zone and all but what I'm hearing, and I think that's the sort of conversation we've been having, which is, but you got to start where you're comfortable first, yes. right? Because that's where your inner strength is. Yes. What I'd love to get your thought on is how do you, at what point or, or when do you know, how do you go about when you feel I started there, I need to get uncomfortable. So what's mm. that pivot point? in your experience, in how you're having these conversations with, with your community, yes. um, what have you learned? I mean, I think, I think that would be a, a great insight for a lot of people. Yeah. I think it's like, it, there comes a point where you start to daydream a little bit about what you'd like to do. And then it's almost like, because you've been following this template or the way of doing it, that makes you feel comfortable. It's almost like you feel like you need permission to do it a different way. Right. And so it's like, just questioning, like, who am I waiting for permission from? Who am I, who am I waiting to approve of this move before I make it? Um, and so that's what I started to realize is when I was like daydreaming, like, huh, I'd like to do it this way. Or like, and then you think, well, what's stopping you from doing it that way? Um, but I think that again, it goes back to that inner power because sometimes when we're on a path, we feel like, well, I'm on this path. I need to follow this path, but really who created that path, right? Like who, who did, um, you're on your own path. You get to choose what comes next. So I think when that feeling of like, Ooh, I want to do it this way. I want to do it that way. Or what about this? Or what if we tried that? You know, when you've spent a little bit of time doing the thing, then you also have to trust that you've learned something. And then you've taken what you've learned with all your past experience and all your expertise and all your gifts. And it's your, your mind is now spitting out something new. Um, and we have to have a bit of self-trust in the process too, to know like, okay, I think I need to go try this. I need to follow this. 
one of the one of the things that we in our experience have have uh, sort of with clients or with with uh, individuals that we've interacted with that shift from going from comfortable to uncomfortable and mm-hmm. that pivot point um generally also comes with a risk mm-hmm. right and, and that uh, no the the comfort path has sustainability it's got it's got a it's got a business model it's got and we all know yes if you don't disrupt yourself somebody else is going to disrupt you all of that is good to speak about yeah. but when you're in that situation it is extremely difficult to move from what is work so you were selling amazing robes hmm. it was working you were getting yeah. likes and and you know you sold 5000 of them hmm. you were making money on that and yes. suddenly for you to then go into well let's you know i need now in some cases, some of those are forced conversations. Some of them are, but I, I'm more interested in wh- what is it that we need to do for ourselves where, where circumstance doesn't have to force it. We can force ourselves. Any yeah. experience around there? Yeah. Well, I often think like, what's the downside if you don't pursue this idea or opportunity? And usually, you know, when one of the things I have people do that I work with is to just go deeper into that risk. Cause I think sometimes we say, Oh, it's too risky, but we don't actually define what the risk is, right? right? Like in the end, are you going to end up homeless on the street? If you make this decision, like break it down, like really look at what, what it is that you're afraid of, because oftentimes, you know, we let this um, ambiguous, like cloud of fear stop us from moving forward and we don't actually pay attention to the blue sky and the bright sunshine that could be just past it, right? So I think it's like having a little bit more of a um, playful, adventurous view on your life and thinking like, wow, what if I do this and it actually works, right? And okay, if it doesn't, truly what is the downside? Truly what have I lost? And then also saying, but who do I become? If I say yes to this, because even if it doesn't work, you are now the person who went and tried that thing. You're the person who went and did it and didn't play safe and didn't hide and like chose to like make big moves in their life, you know? Um, Yeah. And I think that's what drives me. And I, again, I think that we have become almost too risk adverse in, in some ways and and I think we stop ourselves before we even um, before we even like evaluate the level of risk, and also how could we maybe step towards that that dream or whatever that idea in a less a slightly less risky way. I like I like how you've said uh, you know it, yes there is risk, define it, establish it, right, mm-hmm. deal with it, and frankly uh, understand what is the down real downside, and frankly get to how, what would be the worst case scenario yes. and can you live with that? So, so this has been extremely helpful. Uh, you, you meet leaders all the time. Any, any advice for leaders who might be listening onto this podcast right now? Yeah, absolutely. I meet with a lot of leaders who still, um, I feel wear a bit of a mask. They wear a mask because maybe up until a certain point in their career, they were told that this is how you lead and this is how you um, achieve success as a leader. And I think that times are changing. And I think that truly the way you stand out as a leader and the way you really make an impact and really, um, you know, support and empower others is by bringing more of your authenticity into your leadership. Like being you, being being open to showing a little bit of vulnerability. Everybody has different levels of what they feel comfortable with, but you know, showing who you are and bringing people along with you instead of um, feeling like you need to be the picture of perfection who has it all together because we all know nobody has it all together. <laughs> Um, and leading from this place of authority, I think it is more about bringing people along with you through more authentic connection, even as a leader. So that's, I think, through all my work with leaders, the main theme that I've seen 
really allow them to blossom into their next level of leadership. Take your mask off. <laughs> exactly. It. Kena, it's, uh, this is such a great conversation. We can continue to have it. Uh, we are sort of about at that time where uh, we do need to wrap up. But, you know, before we do, obviously, like you mentioned at the very beginning, we had this sort of structure in which we had this conversation. And because of that structure, we were having a bit of a me asking questions and you responding. But you came into this. Uh, let me give you the last word. Was there anything that you had in your mind which was not part of the questions or something that you wanted to share with our listeners? Good question. Um, well, I love the title of your podcast, you know, or the subtitle, I say hi to the future podcast. And I think like, it's important for each of us to think about how we are, you know, saying hi to the future in our own lives and what that means to break out of our autopilot kind of mode and to think about how we want to show up in our lives, both at work and at home with our families and how we want to lead. Because I think that, again, we've been told how to lead, but, you know, we're, we're ingenious humans. Like we have the capability to continue evolving and expanding. And I think that if each one of us took that on as a responsibility, then the world would just change at such a more uh, rapid pace. So I think that's the last thing that I wanted to share. So we've been told how to lead. Let's go discover how we lead. Mm -hmm. um, and let's be authentic while we do that. Let's take a mask off. Thanks a lot, Kena. This has been uh, such a wonderful conversation. We are for sure going to have you come on again. Um, and we will tag you in our show notes. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure our listeners would like to get to know more about you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Saqib. Thank you so much. I had a wonderful time. <laughs>